your Bibles, and I trust you do. We are a Bible Baptist church, and I want to talk to you from 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and uh, several things that we want to look at, and simply talk to you about uh, Christians being enriched, and uh, when we talk about being enriched, it's exciting when we think what God has done for us as Christians, what we have to be thankful for. But uh, God has given us some special things, uh, and we have been enriched. And I hope uh, some of you, you get uh, uh, maybe coffee cream or whatever, and they say enriched with such and such or whatever. And uh, different things, it means it's, it's been made better in one sense. And so God has made us better, and he has enriched us. And he wants us as Christians to be different than all the rest of the other religions, if you please, of the world. And so as we look here, notice what it says in verse 5 of chapter 1, that in everything ye are enriched by him. I, I guess another way to put it is we are better off because of him. And, and there's no question that Jesus has done so much to help us to be in a better position. I mean, it is, I, you think about the majority of this world. And if you ask them a simple question like this, if you were to die today, what would happen to you? And somebody go, oh, I don't know. Why are you asking that question? You got a gun or something? You know, I mean, they just look at you strange. Like when you ask a question, what, what would happen to you? And of course, now the big thing is, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Okay. And, uh, and so in our turn, we want to look at it this way. Are you better off since you got saved? And I think every once would say, well, well yeah, I have to say I, I, I'm better off. But how many times it, it seems like we just take things for granted as a Christian. And how sad that we don't enjoy all the good things that God has given to us. And as he says in this verse here, again, and I think basically we use it kind of as our text. They said that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. So everything that we have from him has enriched us. Jesus' whole purpose was to come and enrich us. And when I say that, uh, to make us citizens of heaven. And again, how exciting. Uh, we deserve hell, but instead we get heaven because of the enrichment that we received from the Son of God and the fact that he was willing to take our sins from us as we give them to him. He'll take them and he'll deal with the punishment that would rightly come for them so we can spend an eternity in heaven. Talk about an enrichment program. Wow. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. And what a blessing when people can see you and know you and, and they go, you must be a Christian because of the things that you do, the things that you say. They can see that you're different, that you're no longer the same person. And uh, Caleb, I know he remembers some of these, and maybe Levi does. But some people I had to say back in the movie, it was amazing because some of them were heavy in the drugs and uh, they were homeless and other things. And when they got saved, it was just like their whole complexion was changed and there was a glow to them that they didn't have before they got saved. And it was just like, wow, they really got changed. Uh, they really got converted or whatever. You could tell that they had been changed. And so that was exciting. And that should be true of everybody that's a Christian. There should be something different about us compared to the rest of the world. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. And basically, isn't it nice to know that we're not going to have to take a gift to Jesus? And, and when I say that, I mean, hopefully you gave him your heart to begin with. But when he comes, we don't have to... You know, greet him and say, okay, Lord, here, we want to take care of our ticket now. We want to pay for it now. We want to give you a special gift now uh, to make sure everything's okay. So that we don't need that because of what Jesus has done for us because of God's wonderful gift. He said, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it, it shouldn't be, well, uh, I know he's coming back, and I know he's coming back soon, but I just don't know that I'll be ready. Or, or what can I do for him since he's coming back? And, and, and he said, don't worry about it. He's coming back anyways. He's coming back to take you to be with him. And we have him enriched. And then he goes on and he says, who shall also confirm you unto the end 
that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That means that I'm forgiven every time I sin. Every sin that I've ever committed, Jesus is able and he wants to forgive me of all those sins. And in essence, even before I ask for forgiveness, and don't misunderstand me because I think we need to ask for forgiveness so we can have a right heart and a right relationship with Jesus. But folks, let's face it, we've been forgiven of all of our sins. And so because of that, we can look forward to going to heaven and it's not a matter of, oh man, I just sinned and Jesus, please don't come back right now, God, because I got the sin, okay? We can look forward to him coming and fulfilling his promises even though we have not been faithful to him. But he said that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And hey, you ready for this? I don't know when I'm going to die. <coughs> okay? I, I, I really don't. Do you know when you're going to die? And we don't. It's not, not very likely that, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be anytime soon. And, and yet, when I think about the selection coming up, maybe uh, it'd be nice if it was soon. But uh, did I say that? Moving along here. It's exciting that we can appear before Christ as blameless, even though we have messed up, even though we are sinners. God looks at us and doesn't see our sin because of what Jesus did for us. So exciting. And notice verse 9 God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, uh, the other day, I uh, accidentally turned uh, our TV that we were watching YouTube and I was looking at some of the news reports and accidentally I, I turned to the, I guess it was the Lowell station or something other, or <coughs> I ended up with the Costco station. And, and when I got there, immediately my wife said, stop, stop, leave it there. And, and I didn't know those things existed, but she had to see all the things that were going on sale and see what the prices were, you know, and it was funny. I she make comments and then I think it's good. Mm-hmm. You that came in next, that, that, oh yeah, that's really good. Uh, that, that's the uh, uh, Costco man or whatever. I think they had a special name for them. And they were looking at all these specials that they had going on. Uh, man, how in the world did they ever get turned over here? And, and then uh, I think Jen immediately said, Mom, uh, you're a Costco member? She says, no, uh, uh, but the moment these are, so I, I go with them and, and that takes care of my, my club shit. <laughs> And, and what I'm saying is, you look at this here, that's what it's referring to. Because it says simply here, God is faithful by whom ye are, were called unto the fellowship, oh, okay, unto the club of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I'm so glad that we belong to that club, that we belong to the club of Jesus and what he has done for us. And that as a result, we've been enriched uh, the other day I had to go pick up some things and take some things back to Lowell's there in uh, uh, Plymouth. And of all things, I saw this guy walk across the way and I thought, is that Jay? And I thought, that if I say anything, it'd be embarrassing. And I thought, if it's not Jay, he's not going to respond. And if it is Jay, uh, he'll respond. And I said, Jay, hi, how are you? And sure enough, he turned around and it was Jay. He looked at me so surprised. But because I ended up being there so long, you ready? Lowell's bought me dinner. You ever had that experience? I, I think they felt sorry for me, but I had to keep staying for this and then for that and for that. Anyhow, uh, my, my list kept growing uh, from back home. So anyhow, and, and what they did, they said, oh, you have a pro card. And because you have a pro card, today is the day that we give our pro card members that are here a free ready steak for a ring to all. That sounds good. And uh, he had some nachos and some other things. And, could have had all the cokes I wanted, but uh, you know I, I felt guilty on that. But anyhow, uh, but what, what I'm saying it was it was really really nice. But it was because I had a pro card, okay, and <laughs> made me special. And, and, and folks, so I, I got enriched and had this free meal because I had a pro card. And when I say it, ain't it great? Because we're Christians, we have something that's a lot better than a pro card, okay. <laughs> And Jesus is going to be feeding us for all eternity. And you're ready? You're not going to get fat. And you're not going to say, oh, I can't eat that because that does make me fat. And, and instead you go, wow, I can eat all of them. <laughs> I can eat this and that and it's okay. And wow, it tastes so heavenly. 
it tastes so perfect. And we go, oh, all, about all the good things about being enriched because we are a Christian. And so again, enriched Christians. And he has enriched us by paying for our sin debt. And again, I, I'm so glad that I'm not going to have to uh, do something to deal with my sin because Jesus is done. And what could I do to pay that debt? Uh, there's nothing I can do to do it. And again, the Bible says, the soul that sinned, it shall die. And then it says again, the wages of sin is death. And so we look at all those things in Revelation 20, 14 says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And so we look at all that and we say, folks, I don't know about you, but I don't want to pay that debt. And I'm so glad that Jesus said, I'll take care of it for you. If you let me. And that's the thing, even though God is God and he's so great. And if you please, he wouldn't have any trouble forcing us to do this or do that. But he gives us the ability to say, yes, I want you, Jesus. Or, no, I'm going to do it my way. Wow, please don't be a fool. Go ahead. Accept what he has done for you. Accept that wonderful free gift. And again, that enrichment that we have through him. So again, there's basically there's two ways to pay off the debt. You can suffer forever in hell because of it, or you can accept the payment for it that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. And if I make a simple arithmetic there, I would accept what Jesus did for me and I look forward to being enriched throughout all eternity in the presence of the Lord. He was has enriched us by putting us into a, you ready, a new family. I, sisters, brothers, I, <laughs> isn't it great uh, that we are related to each other through, and it's a blood relationship too, through the blood of Christ. We have that unique relationship. And, you know, some of our families here on earth may not be that good. And I talked to some people just real recently, and they were sharing with me about some problems they had with their family. And uh, it, it's frightening things that can happen, you think, how in the world could something like that ever take place? How could a mother ever get upset with a daughter? And, uh, how could, you know, a, a, a father ever be upset with his daughter or his son? Or how could, y'all stop looking at each other. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, how could that ever happen? And folks, it does happen, doesn't it? So you don't have to agree fully there, okay? But what I'm saying is, it is nice that God has put us together as a family. And even though we have all these differences and everything else, there's no two of us that look alike in here. I thank the Lord. I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyhow, we all look different, have our unique ways. And even though we may have grown up in the same family, we can be as different as night and day. I mean, look at Caleb and then look at Levi. And I know some say, well, Caleb's the good looking one, Levi's, you know, whatever. And then it may be that way, well, Levi's, you know, whatever. And uh, so, and, which one looks the most like me? <laughs> Kayla. Kayla looks the most like me. Oh, he is the best looking one of the two. Isn't he? <laughs> 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 I can't get a few. <laughs> Stop gagging. <laughs> but what I'm saying, we're all family, so you ready? He's your brother too. Isn't that neat? And he's my son, but he's my brother. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, it gets really exciting. When you think of how God has placed us into this wonderful family, truly the family of God. But before we were born again, <laughs> we were born in sin, and we belong to Satan's family. Folks, I'm so glad that the devil's no longer uh, my father in one sense. He's no longer, you know, he's the father of lies. And we can go home. But he, he doesn't have that ability in my life. He, he's not going to take me to hell with him because I've accepted what Jesus did for me. And so now I no longer belong in the family, but in God's name. The unsaved men uh, can't say, my father, which art in heaven. And how sad are there so many people that because they don't know God, they refuse to accept God's plan. And so they have chosen not to go to God's family, but they continue Satan's family. Wow, what a tragedy. So again, <laughs> God's not his father because he's a child of the devil, according to John chapter 8, verse 44. In John 8, 44, listen to what it says. And again, 
uh, Jesus speaking. And as it says here, he said, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Not like politician, not like when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And so Jesus makes it very clear that we were put into a new family. And folks, the family that we were all in before was doomed. And there was no hope outside of God intervening in our behalf for our sins. He loved us so much and he was so perfect and he was so sinless. But yet he was willing to take all of our ugly, dirty sin that had us damned to eternity without him. He took it all upon himself, even knowing that we might not receive him. I think a majority of this world has not received Jesus. How sad. So we see also he has enriched us by giving us a new nature. Wow, sometimes I, I do things in this body and, and I go, wow, I can't believe I did that. Or I, I can't believe I said that. Or I, how, how, how did I think that thought? That's so terrible. And, and I, I know better. I'm a preacher. I should. And, and we look at some of the things we do because of our, our physical nature. But I'm so thankful that God has given me a new nature. He's changed me. And the new nature makes me more like Christ. And that's an exciting nature to have a relationship with Christ as he's given us that new nature. We are born uh, again of, a, uh, of nature with a carnal, sinful nature. And all the Bible teaches that then when we are born again, God gives us a new nature, a spiritual nature. And again, how exciting when we make the fact that we've been called into a spiritual battle and that we can fight with spiritual tools and spiritual instruments and we can have tremendous victories. And in this spiritual battle, instead of seeing how many people we can plow under with a machine gun or whatever it might be or with a hand grenade or you know, some uh, powerful uh, rocket or whatever, we're seeing how many people that are dead that we can bring to life. Isn't that exciting? I mean, isn't that exciting bar that we go out and our enemies become our brothers and sisters? Wow. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I think that's pretty enriching that we can make our enemies our best friends and make them family. And so again, an enriched Christian, we have so much to look forward to because of what Christ has done for us. And then one last thought. He has enriched us by giving us a Bible to read. And I know this morning our, our message was on the Word, and we pointed out how important it is for us to let the Word have a way in our lives and to value God's Word above everything. But again, He has enriched us by giving us the Bible. And God's best gift to us was His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And His second best gift, I want to label it away, would be the Word of God, which tells us about His Son. And again, how exciting that our lives can be enriched as we read this book. This can en enrich us with a supplement that's from heaven above. Wow, making us more like Jesus, making us more like God. So we see that life would be mighty poor if we didn't have the Bible. And so I'm so thankful for the word of God. We would not know of a savior who died for our sins if it wasn't for the Bible. We would not know again how to live every day, but with God's word, we have a plan to help us get through every day of our life and to get through every situation that we might face, no matter how complicated it might be. And it's exciting as we look at this word over and over again, and the word, one of the main words of the word is love. Isn't that great that we see the love God, that we can see the love of God in our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can see the love of God, if you please, in our church and in our missionaries. Again, exciting what God has done to enrich us, to help us so that we can have a greater love for others because it's a Christ-like love. And again, in 1 John chapter 3, 
it refers to this one part of the verse in Scythra says that God is love. And so it emphasizes over and again in chapter 3 of uh, 1 John uh, the importance of love. And then I think 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and then he referred to it as the love of the Bible. So again, love, you see it all over the place. And we've been enriched in such a way that we can love people that are unlovely. That we can love people with a God-like love. That we can love them in such a way that they can feel God in us and feel his presence working. Again, when I thank him all these things, we would not know the good things of God as prepared for those who love him. Yes, life is enriched because of the Bible. Life is enriched because of what Jesus did for us on Calvary. Our life is enriched because of God's goodness again. And I'm so thankful that he is good to us and uh, that we can get excited about the enrichment and, and uh, wow. we've been working on our house, Levi has been, and we appreciate that so much. But uh, one thing we found out that when a house is 140 years old, uh, a lot of things can happen. And it's amazing all the changes that a house can go through in 140 years. And it really is 140 years old. It was built in 1884. Um, so, anyhow, it, it, it's just staggering sometimes all, all the work that you have to do to keep it up. But isn't it nice to know that God has given us an enriched home in heaven? that it's not going to need any more enrichment. Uh, our house constantly needs repairs. That means we're constantly having to spend more money on it to keep it together, to keep it from uh, leaking on us or from falling down or from electrocuting us or whatever. That uh, God has enriched a home in heaven for us that will never need any improvement because it's perfect. It's so much. And, and again, I hope that you think on this. Has your life been enriched because of Jesus? And there shouldn't be a person in here. In fact, if we were to have testimony and say, can you tell us how God has enriched your life? And, and it would be amazing. Of course, I think the first thing Jane would say, God gave me Lola. And then Lola would say, God gave me Jay. You know, because they're celebrating this anniversary. And go, oh, yeah, great. That's God's enrichment, you know. And this thing, Jay, you would have had a hard time having nine children without your wife, wouldn't you? <laughs> So, and without him, you'd have a hard time to have nine children. So, um, anyhow, uh, I'm, I'm straight a bit here. But what I'm saying, it is exciting what God has done for you and that He loves you so special. He said special lengths to give you a complete life enriched by 